So a tired mom came home after work and found that one of her kids had made a sandwich but didn't clean up afterwards. She walked upstairs and found the three of them doing their homework. All of the children, Aaron, Chloe, and Tim, denied making a mess. Still, the mother could tell who was lying. Who do you think is guilty, and how did she understand it? Since there's butter on the right side of the knife, the person who made the sandwich is left-handed. She has only one left-handed kid, and that's Tim. It's a cold fall day. You're at home drinking hot chocolate and watching a movie. Outside, four neighboring kids are playing. Lily, Riley, Tom, and Mark. Suddenly, exactly when you turn around, a ball breaks your window and kids run away. You don't know who did it, and no one confessed. Later in the evening, though, you get a note from Lily. She didn't want to give away her friends, but being a very nice and honest girl, she also couldn't keep silent. So she gave you a note with a little hint. In the note, there was just a question mark. Take another look at the note. Can you guess who did it? The question mark is saying it all. Question mark. So Mark must be the one who threw the ball. A king couldn't decide which of his sons he should name his heir. He called his sons and proposed an unusual tournament. The horses would decide. There would be a horse race, and whose horse came last would be named king. When the race started, of course, no one moved. They were standing like this for three nights and three days, until the race was postponed. The sons were thinking a lot how to solve this problem. The next day, all three of them jumped on their horses' backs and raced as fast as they could. But the king never changed the rules. Why did they do that, and what was the solution? The sons decided to switch the horses. Now each was racing fast to make the horse of the brother come first. Right in broad daylight, you find yourself trapped in the dungeon of the world's most famous villains, and you should leave ASAP. Behind the first door, there's Joker waiting for you. The second door will take you straight to Freddy from Five Nights at Freddy's. Behind the third door, there's a Demogorgon from Stranger Things. The choice is yours. I definitely recommend using the second door. Freddy is not dangerous during the day, because he only wakes up at night. All of the money from the city's bank was taken in the middle of the day without anybody noticing. The storage room was found completely empty, with only a note lying on the floor. There was a number written on it, 37738. The police arrested three of the most known criminals in the city, Belle, Jonas, and Steve, but they didn't know which one was guilty. They invited a detective to crack the hint, and he managed to do it immediately. Can you guess who? If you turn the paper around, the numbers will turn into a name, Bell. Hannah went on a business trip to a nearby city and stayed at a hotel. She was relaxing, reading a book after a long day, when she heard a knock on the door. She opened, asking what happened. The man outside got confused and said, Oh, sorry for bothering you. I thought it was my room, and left. Hannah didn't believe it was just a mistake and called the security to apprehend the man. Why was she so suspicious? The problem was that the guy had knocked. If he really thought it was his room, he'd try to open it with his keys. A peasant boy was caught in the king's palace. The king was very mad and didn't want to let him go just like that. He loved all kinds of riddles, so he gave the boy a chance to escape. 
He said the boy could walk out of any of the three doors, and if he stayed safe, he was free. Behind the first door, there were lions that hadn't eaten in three years. Behind the second door, there were three trained assassins. Behind the third door, there was poisonous gas. The boy made his choice and managed to leave. Which door did he walk out of? He used the first door. If lions hadn't eaten in three years, they couldn't have survived. They were just skin and bones. <laughs> a young woman, Julia, drank a spiked tea and left a note. The note was saying, I just can't live like this anymore, and so I won't. Nobody's guilty. However, the officer didn't think she drank the tea willingly. He suggested that someone had staged everything and made her do it. After a careful analysis, it was confirmed that the note was really written by Julia. Still, the police officer arrested the one who was guilty. There were only three people in the house – Julia's boyfriend, Ian, her older sister, Kate, and her lab partner, Mia. Can you guess who's guilty? The first letters of each sentence come together as Ian, her boyfriend's name. He must have made her write a note to make it look like it was her choice, but Julia left a hint for the police. A man fell off the third floor of the building. He was fine, but he lost his memory and couldn't tell what happened. Someone had seen him a while ago washing the windows, and everybody agreed it must have been an accident. However, a detective decided to check if it was true. He walked up to the third floor, opened the window, and threw down a coin. When he returned, he stated that the man didn't fall himself, but somebody pushed him out. How did the detective know? The detective opened the window. It means it had been closed before. If the man had fallen by accident, the window would have remained open. You're locked in a dungeon. There are three ways out, but none of them seem safe. Behind the first door, there's a huge and strong guard. Behind the second, there's three big and hungry dogs. Behind the third door, there's two sharp spinning cogwheels. Which way should you follow to get out and stay safe? The third one! The cogwheels are quite high above the ground, so you can crawl beneath them. You and your friend come back home very late, when everyone is already asleep. Nobody knew that you were outside, and nobody should. There's a code on the door that asks to type in the rest of it. Your friend completely forgot it, but if you don't type it in 10 seconds, it'll start the security alarm. Can you guess what the missing numbers are? The combination is just a set of two-digit numbers – 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So the other six digits are 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8 – that make the remaining 16, 17, and 18. James is a single father of triplet daughters. He stayed late at work and got a call from a friend who just saw one of his daughters at a party in a different neighborhood. However, the friend couldn't tell which of the daughters it was. When James came home, he asked his daughters who had been at the party. Autumn said she had been doing her homework all evening. Serena said she spent the day outside reading. Emily said she'd been playing Uno. James could tell immediately who was lying. Can you? Emily. She couldn't play Uno alone. She would need a partner for that. You're lost in a deep forest. It's getting dark, and you have to get out immediately, unless you want to spend the night in the woods. Luckily, you come across a little shack where a witch lives. 
She promises to show you a way out if you solve her riddle. So here it is. Ava's mom has three daughters. The oldest daughter's name is April. The second daughter's name is May. Can you guess what's the name of the youngest daughter? It's Ava's mom, so the last daughter's name is Ava. Stephanie came home after a tiring day at work. She was very excited to finally eat her favorite ice cream after a hot bath. But when she opened the freezer, the ice cream was gone. Stephanie guessed it must have been one of her kids who ate it. She called them and asked, who ate my treat? Michael said, I just got home and haven't eaten anything yet. Nicole said, I didn't touch your ice cream. The youngest, Jenny, said, it wasn't me. Stephanie immediately realized who was lying. Can you guess? It was Nicole. She knew that her mother talked about ice cream, even though Stephanie didn't specify what her treat was. Mm-hmm.